Be prepared for highly offensive language throughout and adult and sexual themes. Tonight, it all kicked right off in Shut the fuck up talking to me. Oh, I have to go. I come down and just started. She really don't know about that now. You're they fake. Have... You're fake. Rodrigo's cool. These two bitches got to go. They need to go. I think she's talking about you. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, so the storm has finally arrived. She is taking no prisoners. Uh, and who's looking forward to uh, Nick Leeson doing a bit of twerking at some point? Is that yeah? It's got to be worth the 827 million, folks. Uh, coming up, she is a talk show god. She's here to solve all of our housemates' problems. The Trisha Goddard is back <laughs> on Fox, where she belongs. Yeah, she's loving it. She's over there, like, yeah. It's Trisha Tuesday on a Wednesday. Uh, plus, we're going to be going backstage for a little sneak peek around the Big Brother production village. Oh, yeah. Behind the scenes, we're going to be finding out how this big bro show gets made. Turns out, don't make itself. Who would have thought, eh? Actually, people work here. Uh, and we're going to be taking a look at the Twitter storm that you have been causing and hearing all your views on our celebrity housemates. But time now to meet tonight's panel. She tore up Towie, loved up Love Island, and tonight she is buffing up Fox. It's the gorgeous reality star, Georgia Harrison! <laughs> He's a man who knows a thing or two about celebrity media storms. He's written most of them. It's tabloid tell it all. Dan Wan. <laughs> and finally, she's the queen of the ballroom who's always up for a spot of cha cha cha. It's the current Strictly Come Dancing champion, Katya Jones. <laughs> what a panel. We have got so much to talk about tonight. So let's start with the reactions to the noms reveal, in alphabetical order, obviously, uh, Hardy and Natalie. Um, I think it's quite fair to say Natalie took the news quite well. What the fuck? Uh, oh, she's still vibing up. Um, Katja, excuse the, uh, you know, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Pun. But she thinks she's making a bit of a song and dance about it. <laughs> Do you know what? I think... They should be more clear about it. There isn't the person to sort of play along and like wind her up. Everyone just went, oh, we're Everyone's scared. Everyone's got let's a little bit meek around yeah, her. Yeah, let's haven't nominate they? or get her out. But we want someone to, you know, maybe, you know, pull those Just stir the in. pot, basically. Yeah, stir her up a bit more. good. Dan, I mean, for headlines, I mean, she's making your job a dream come true at the moment. <laughs> she is delivering at the moment. Do you think the housemates, as Katia just said, should be provoking the beast a bit more, to say the least? Well, yeah, I think they should. I love her. I think she's I an absolutely amazing housemate. And she's got to stay in. I'm very, very convinced about that. Do you think that this is her reality TV background? Is this her bad girls club coming out? Is she playing a game or is this her? I think it is her, but I also think that she's a little bit more unleashed uh, than Brits. It takes a little bit longer for British celebrities yeah. to lose it. We, we wait at least a week. But it's coming. Yeah. And you know what? There's a, there's, a, there's a few shades in Gabby that are a little bit similar to that. Oh, do you think? Definitely. Oh, I'm, he I'm hearing a couple of... So I just went, she's a scouser. You're going to upset <laughs> every scouser that's watching. We love scousers on this show. Uh, as Rodrigo pointed out, though, Jesus Christ, that's the game. Um, <laughs> Georgia, do you think maybe she might have forgotten that that is the game of Big Brother? It's nominations. People have to be nominated. Plus, you also kicked off during nominations. <laughs> At the end of the day, I think, I think she must have seen it coming. I think she's been a little bit melodramatic. And she said the B word about eight times tonight. Mm. Like, how angry can you be? all the time. She's always angry. But she, she has literally got beef all over the shop. Every single aisle <laughs> contains beef in that shop. Uh, we saw her bring Gabby to tears in last night's show, uh, and that escalated today with Gabby saying she wanted to go home, but Natalie and Rodrigo 
they said they felt left out of the workout fund. Um, Dan, look, you touched on it a little bit there. Oh, my God. But, Gabby, do you think she meant to leave someone out of the group? You said she's got a side to her. Well, we were talking about this, and... Uh... Oh, you're always talking about something. <laughs> And there is something about Gabby uh, that likes hanging out more with the blokes. Yeah, and she said that. You know, she said that. And for me, it's all about the simmering, weird sexual chemistry between her and Dan. Do you think there is something? Oh my there? goodness, yes. Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my hands Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Right? I feel I do, and I'm, I'm just saying this probably because I'm married myself. It's awful. We know Dan is obviously married to Jacqueline, whether they're together or not. They've just had a baby. It feels mucky talking about it. But these two are in Big Brother. It's a subject that is going to come up. They're both there for that Well, they're storm. both single. And the they're moment. both single yeah. at the moment. Do you think there is something there? I do. I do. It's like when, when he's sort of over there to look after her, it's all just... It, look, it's unsaid at the moment, but you know when you can just actually sense a bit of electricity coming from the television. I got that tonight. George, you've been there with Gabby. You know her. I know both of them. And I, honestly, I just think that's him as a person. I think if I was in there crying, he'd say, oh, George, you're right. Especially when he went to console her, it's because he felt like maybe he'd made her feel worse. Mm. I feel like they feel like they can't even sit together because everyone's picking away at everything they do. Yeah. They're just Natalie mates. is doing that as well. She is bringing it up And you know what? Yeah, she spends time with the boys, but they're the most fun people in there. So that's why true. wouldn't she? They are. <laughs> She's got balcony top on, she doesn't care. Something metallic. Uh, we saw Rodrigo make his peace with Gabby tonight as well. Katia, do you think Rodrigo is trying to make that effort? He's trying to put that olive branch out, saying, you know, let's start afresh and start from the beginning? Uh, yeah, I don't know. To be honest, I've been watching and I've been like, oh, nothing. I wanted some more stuff to happen. You just live for the drama, yeah, didn't like, you? I, even when Rodrigo had his Brazilian outfit, like, I was expecting him to go, go out, show samba and all that, and he was a little bit... And he's not, he's just going through doorways Yeah, like exactly, sideways, <laughs> rather than, like, go like that. Go on, girl, I mean? she's having a shimmy on the panel <laughs> so tonight. So it'd be good if... Maybe they should all go, OK, let's just have fun well, and leave everything. Do you know what, Katia? The one thing that I'm so disappointed at, we all want to see this twerk out happen, don't yeah. we? I mean, yeah. I've been waiting for the twerk, especially if Nick's involved. Nick's I, gonna... I want to twerk on national TV. Do I? <laughs> Fuck. All right. <laughs> don't say you're going to do it. Um, who here doesn't want to see Nick Leeson twerking? I'm sorry, I I'm sure we don't. <laughs> Why not? I just don't think he should be doing things like that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> should not be doing that at Boo all. this man! <laughs> Boo that man! Yeah. 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 Well, you're going to feel awkward now because someone who knows a thing or two about Nick's moves is his lovely wife, Leona. Yeah, that's right. Oh. And we are lucky to have her on the phone tonight. Evening, Leona. Hi. Give up for Leona, everyone. Yeah. It's good time. Yeah. Leona, thanks so much for calling up. First of all, let's just get it out of the way. What kind of moves does Nick like to throw when he's out at the discotheque? He's not allowed. <laughs> not a lot. Him. Not a lot. No, he's not allowed. Have you ever seen I any twerking allowed. from him? Um, no, and that sounds awful, but no. You have I did. No. <laughs> well, keep your eyes out, because you might be seeing hoping... some tomorrow. <laughs> oh, um, my goodness. <laughs> other than his dancing habits, how do you think he is coping in there? Because I'm going to say it, I think so far out of everyone, he's coping really well in there. He, he's a real person, so, you know, he's really down to earth. He takes everything in his stride. So I wasn't surprised that he's the same person that I live with. And he's, he's behaving exactly the same as he does at home, so it's quite sweet. Oh, it's uh, actually you know what? It's got, I'm, I'm really proud of it. get the wife on. Leona, thank you so much for ringing up. Thank and you. hopefully I'll get to speak to you soon. Give up for Leona, everyone. Yeah. Trish is going to be going into a bit more detail about how to handle the storm, Natalie, a bit later on. But in other news, Kirsty and Ryan's time in office is now over. It's gone, which means the pool room, a.k.a. Rodrigo Salon, is officially <laughs> open. Uh, George, the salon's officially open. <laughs> is this going to be a place now of people to make up, or is it just going to be an absolute bitch fest in that pink room? Oh, let's be honest, it's a bit of a madness in there. As soon as she walked in, she said she didn't want too much noise. It's like a zoo in there. She doesn't want too much noise. And she signed up for the wrong thing. Yeah. I think it's only going to get worse for them lot. Kirsty ain't going to have it. Katia, would you book an appointment at Rodrigo Salon? <laughs> yes, I would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why not? Let's see what happens. I think it's quite kind yeah. of him to, like, get up in the morning and say, I'll do everyone's makeup. He can listen. <laughs> My makeup artist, Debbie, better watch out, girl. You might be having a job. Yeah. Um, yeah. She loves it. She loves it. She loves it. 
We're going to pick on that. Uh, but more importantly, Kirsty and Ryan can now integrate into the group more. Dan, Kirsty was really opening up about her Hollywood past and, you know, some naughty dreams she might have had. You, as a showbiz editor, you must be loving the fact that Kirsty Alley, hi, I'm Kirsty Alley, is in the Celebrity Big Brother house. I genuinely still can't get over it. I, I honestly think it's one of the best ever bookings on Celebrity Big Brother. And actually, on any reality show on the UK, in the UK, ever. I'm I sorry, mean, but it's Kirsty Alley. Yeah. <laughs> and I am loving that she's starting to share some more about her past and open up a little bit more as well because this is a woman with so many so great many stories. stories. But do you think and that I still will just come out more now? She's yeah, definitely, definitely, because this is the whole point, right? I think she should win already, really? hands down. But I do sense an unraveling coming. Oh, really? And she sort of admitted that herself. You know, she's a very, very volatile person. But this is a genuine superstar. Well, if she don't get her sleep, she ain't going to be happy. I think we all know that. Uh, listen, I'm really happy with this panel, and I'm over the moon with this audience. Give me a round of applause. Thanks a lot for part one. We're coming up. We're going to have all the latest news from the house. Plus, you'll be finding out what Big Brother producers actually get up to all day when I went behind the scenes of the Big Brother production village. But before all of that, the housemates have nominated. But who? Is going to ride out the storm. Is it Hardeep or will it be Natalie? Who stays, Katya? You decide. Katya, will you decide there from Katya? <laughs> See you after the break. Oh, okay. <laughs> this week, Hardeep and Natalie face the public vote. Who stays, you decide. To save Hardy from a landline, call 090 20 44 58 05 or from a mobile, call 6 50 58 05. To save Natalie from a landline, call 090 20 44 58 08 or from a mobile, call 6 50 58 08. Calls to the long number will cost 50 pence plus your network access charge. Calls to the short number will cost 50 pence. Voting closes in Friday's eviction show. Votes cast after lines close won't count. If you're watching on Catch Up after that or outside the UK, please don't vote. You can find terms on the Big Brother website. <laughs> on the side. <laughs> They're making the most of it tonight. Uh, now, listen, here on Bots, I always like to keep the energy levels high, as you can see by my lovely audience. But I like to do a nice, good old workout. And there's this new fitness DVD on the market, guys. Oh, yeah, it is. Have a look at this. Ready for this? Let's go, everybody! Hey! One, two, three. Don't stop it, boy. <laughs> Are you warming up? That is a factor, Bobby. What? You got twenty four. Go five, go six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Work it out, big boy. That's it, big boy. Oh, damn. More worn out than one of Kirstie Alley's sex dreams. And uh, uh, I wanted to show you lot how Big Brother gets made because I love a bit of behind the scenes. So I put my Access All Area Security Pass. Up, well, well, actually, I haven't got a security pass. This is the pass, babes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Have a little look at what goes on. So here we are. This is where the magic happens. This is the Big Brother production village. It's quite hard to get in here, but clearly I'm a bit of a face. Come on. Hello, Tyler. Excuse me, can I see your pass, please? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, do you want a photo? No, no, I'd like to see your pass. I, I can't let you give him that pass. Stop I'm really it. Sorry, sir. No, Stop really, it. Can you not touch me? Excuse me. So this is the reality gallery. This is where everything is controlled from. Voice of God, the diary room. And this year there's new technology, there's facial recognition. It's all going on in here this year. And just over there is the diary room booth. So that is where Big Brother sits and speaks to the housemates. So there is a diary room going on right now. So if you look. Uh, yeah, Digital team in there. They're loving life. They don't get out much. They don't get out much. Some foliage, artificial, casual palm tree. Why not? And it's all like a little nod as well to Big Brother over the years because, look, they've been in the house at some point. And on a show like Big Brother, it's really, really stressful at times because it's a 24-7 job. 
So there's a nice little chill out area, look. How lovely is this? Hi, I'm just chilling out by the foliage. These are really nice. Can I rob these? Excuse me, can you get out of the way, please? Speak of these security ladies. This is the design cabin, but excuse me, you can't look in there because we've got plans for the civilian house. You are not seeing that. This I'm not happy about. This is the reality buggy, and there's a bit of a war going on at the moment because obviously on bots we always have a blinged up buggy. They're trying, but I mean, it looks like a child's birthday at the moment. Little cherry picker. This is for helping me get ready. Um, I don't like putting on my own clothes. So I have someone go up on the lift and slowly bring down my T-shirts. So this is what it feels like to be an audience member on eviction night. Yeah, it's so quiet. Because the housemates are literally behind those doors up there. I always get emotional coming up here. And through those doors are where the eviction interview happens with Emma. So the first time that they speak after leaving that house happens on the other side of this screen. Well, there you go. That is a sneaky look around the Big Brother production village. So, Ryland, it's back to you in the studio. Still ahead, darling. Who are you? Sorry, who are you? I've been here for six years. Of course, they know who I am. I'm not embarrassed in the slightest. Right, it is time now for tomorrow's headlines in today's Bots News. <laughs> Yeah, simmer, simmer. Our top stories tonight. The housemates are cleaning up their acts. Storm Natalie's causing destruction. Chloe's got the baby blues. And the storm takes a breather in the diary room. OK, let's go. First up, at 2.01 this afternoon, the housemates were ready for a clean slate. Run, VT. It's like common sense shit. Just, like, just clean up around the house when you're standing there or whatever. It's just normal. Today, I sat down in my vanity chair, and I have asked everybody, and, and Roxanne is my witness, and Rodrigo, there was fucking shit all over the vanity room uh, table. I know that Chloe did sit in my vanity chair yesterday and left a big, wet mess. I, I told you, don't do that shit again. Wow. Looks like Natalie is not the girl to mess with. There... Come, on. Come on. Then at 2.09 this afternoon, a severe weather warning has been issued to the Big Brother house and its surrounding areas. Run, VT. Don't yeah. come over here, Rodrigo. Don't come over here, Rodrigo. That's true. No, Rodrigo, shut up. Don't come over here talking to me. Because oh. you were in the fucking vanity room no, talking oh, shit about her doing the same fucking no, thing. Oh, stop, no, I Rodrigo, agree. stop. You I want agree. me to be the bad guy to say no, it. No, no, but I Shut agree. up, Rodrigo, shut up. Because that's fucking fake right there, oh. what you just did. No, but I agree. Oh, you're just a baby. You just sat there and said she's not a fucking baby. She's grown. And then you just did that. That is horrible. That is horrible. I do not like that, right. Rodrigo. Don't no. fucking do that. And then you just said, you tell them. Yes, a warning has been released. Lock up your families because Storm Natalie is on the loose and no one is safe. For those of you who get caught up, it was lovely knowing you. Later at 2.18, the storm escalated to catastrophic, I'm being told, catastrophic levels for one page three model in particular, run BT. Darling, don't, don't mind. Excuse me, um, I'm not trying to be rude and you're not going to start this whole crybaby shit. I'm going to keep it real with you. You know what you're doing. And, and, I'm, and this Roxanne and this little cupcake and ass shit, you're not going to make me look like I'm bullying you. You're 21 years old. You know you're grown. You know right from wrong, Chloe. Hold on, no way. I'm not done talking. You have the nerve to tell me while we're sitting on the table, okay, I did it one time. Don't talk to me like that. I go to get in, in the chair and it's soaking. My mama would have whipped my ass doing some stupid shit like that in our house. Yeah, yeah, unsettling scenes. First Rodrigo and now Chloe are finding themselves caught in the eye of that storm. And finally, at 2.20 this afternoon, it would appear that even the powerful big brother couldn't avoid Natalie's tailwind. Run VT, please. Yeah. For everybody to continue to say, oh, Chloe's just a baby. Chloe doesn't know any better. Chloe's just a lost little soul. She's not. And I'm not buying that shit. She's not a baby. Stop saying she's a baby, because it's going to look like I'm like this big bad wolf coming for Chloe. No. Yeah, we're getting so much breaking news. We're going to be keeping an eye on that storm for the time being. But now let's cross to our roving reporter, Dan Wooden, to hear his thoughts. Dan, are you there? Yes, I've got a lot to tell you. Thank you, Dan right Wooden. There. Great chat. And that was today's Celebrity Fox News. Thanks. <laughs> Go 
anywhere because after the break, we're going to find out who's gone and bust the Big Brother toilet. What drama. Plus, she is the one. She is the only. She's the Trisha Bleeding Goddard is back in the studio. <laughs> and she's going to be back. Telling us how to deal with Storm Natalie. Shut yeah. the fuck up. All right, girl. You're fake, fake, you're fake, you're fake. All right, you're fake, Natalie. You're fake, you're fake. That is no way to talk about Trisha Goddard. <laughs> but I have got my brolly at the ready. I'll see you straight after the break. See you after this. Trisha, don't worry. <laughs> I always treat everyone the same. Yeah. It's what you do. Sorry, welcome back to Celebrity Big Brothers Fit on the Sun. You know, we were just having a little chat then. I totally relate to what Roxanne was saying about the pitfalls of being a celebrity. We all do, don't we? I mean, I've got friends that are from home. I've got friends that work in shops, uh, restaurants. I mean, I've got friends in Hollywood. Yeah, got friends in Hollywood. Got friends in Borenwood as well. Um, but the thing is, I treat them all equally. I treat every single person equally. I really... This, this water is not the right temperature. <laughs> who, who brought me that? <laughs> yeah, don't do it again. But I treat every... It's still rolling. It's still rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out who's owned up to wait for it. Biggest drama of the series. Still rolling. <laughs> Someone's broke the Big Brother toilet! Oh, no! Uh, right, guys. Guys, we're together. guys, we've got a question. It's, it's all right. It's all friends here. It's no, no one's going to get in trouble. <laughs> oh, God. No one's going to get in trouble. All we want is the truth. Just the truth. And the question yeah. is... Who? who broke the toilet seat? Just be honest. Yeah. Did anyone jump on the toilet seat? I think it's when you put it down hard, it must have like just cracks in that ah. thing. You know, when you flip it back down. So it was a guy. Must have been me. It was me, I think. <laughs> I put my foot on the because I took my glasses. For some reason I took my glasses off. Hmm. That's what it was. I heard a crack, but it didn't. I checked it, but there wasn't a break in it. It must have been me that started. I'm sorry. Bomb. Thank you. Lucky there I we nominated go. We've got to Big brother, it was Paula, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I really thought I was sleeping. <laughs> yeah, he was being shifty there, weren't he, Katia? You can't just go in there and break the toilet like that, can you? It looks like shit just got real. <laughs> <laughs> she brings her own gags, guys. <laughs> she brings her own gags. Dan, I mean, that is the cardinal sin. You cannot break the Big Brother toilet, surely. Oh, gosh, Cardi is like the nightmare housemate <laughs> in every possible way, isn't oh. he? The snoring. I, I just. I, but listen, you can't have a go at Cardi for snoring, can you, surely? Yes, I can. Okay, you can. Okay, he's going to go there. George, is the snoring getting on your nerves? Oh, we can't help it, bless him. I think it's nice when someone snores. You know someone's there. <laughs> <laughs> He's alive. And what about you lot? What are we making of Hardeep so far? Oh, oh Barbara, lovely to see you, Barb. No, he might have a problem, because yeah. my husband had a problem, <laughs> and I took it further, and I saved his life. With, with the, with the snoring. snoring. The, the snoring. snoring. <laughs> so, you know, I, how do you know, Dan, that you don't snore? Hey, yeah. Oh, many a people have told me I don't. But I don't believe that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just bragging. <laughs> He's just bragging, <laughs> is Dan Wharton. Uh, well, the housemates have been locked in with each other now for over a week. Well, just under a week, actually, I'm lying. Uh, and the cracks are starting to show, especially on the toilet seat. Uh, there is only one person who can make sense of it all. I've waited so long for this. It's time for... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Trisha! Okay. Go on, girl. Good luck with that on the acrylic. Um, Trisha, it's so lovely to have you back. Looking gorgeous as ever. Thank you, darling. What are you making of the series so far? I Nearly mean... a week in. Oh my gosh, I'm loving it. Loving it. I think it's brilliant. You're loving Just it. Just get better and better. This house, though, Trisha, has been drenched Ooh. with Storm Natalie. What are you making of her? I actually like her because she's saying what we think, uh, although the way in which she says it rubs people up the wrong way. Um, she, she susses people out quite a lot. She likes a fight, but no more than Gabby likes a cry. Oh! oh. She's been on two seconds and she started stirring already. I'm just saying. You've just mentioned Gabby. Is she one of them lot that needs to be protecting themselves with an umbrella against this storm? Well, her umbrella are what I call the tatted trio. Oh, <laughs> go on. Jermaine, Ben <laughs> and Dan, because they've become her protectors. And she actually, she, she said herself that she gets on with guys better than girls. So they've become her protectors. So they're like her little puppets at the moment. They're protecting her. 
Um, but Do you think she needs protecting? I don't think she needs. I'm, I'm with Dan here. She's a lot tougher than she seems. Uh, she might be out of her, her depth a little bit, but I, I don't think the crying is doing her any favours because it's starting to get on my nerves, so I don't know about people at yes. home. Okay, fair enough. Let's, let's move away from Gabby for a minute. Let's talk about the nominations for a bit. Oh, the noms. The first noms of the series, and it's caused all of this. Um, how are you thinking the housemates, apart from Natalie, should we say, have dealt with the nominations news? <laughs> well, is that apart from Natalie, uh, I think wonderfully. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, it's kicked off something else. And Natalie, when she said that she was going to make life hell for everybody, I didn't think she'd live up to that, but she seems to be doing that. And I think everybody's everybody's starting to feel a little bit guilty, um, but still, it's been done. What's been done has been done. Hard Eat's very clever, you notice. Is he? He's gone very quiet, and he's just letting Natalie do her thing, write her own death warrant, so do you to think? speak. Oh, yes. Well, look, we need to talk about her. I mean, it's always a bit of an earthquake when noms go into the house, yeah. but this one was a full-on cyclone, uh, and there was one person who wasn't scared of Nat. Have a look at this. There's a few fucking people in this house that make people feel really uncomfortable about who they are and what they do, and what they believe in, and where they come from, and their beliefs. Somebody has to be up, right? I they're, guess. They're, you can be up for three votes in that. That's what you've got to think yeah. of. Right, there's 13 of us in here, and you can be up basically on three votes. It wasn't like it okay. happened because I, it was just a real moment. I just asked a question, okay. and then it was a storm that came okay. through. So let me say something to you. The timing of your real moment wasn't great. Okay. Now, he's a brave man, this is Nick Lisa, and he's gone straight in there, but he managed to diffuse that situation oh, look, quite Nick, easily. Right, and Nick has been in prison. These people are pussies compared to... Oh! <laughs> Trisha said pussies! <laughs> Trisha said pussies! Pussies! Cool. Listen, I'm sure Nick had to <laughs> diffuse a lot more than a few screaming banshees in prison. And... And also, the other thing is that Natalie recognises that he's real. And it's why, why is she listening to him? Because he is real. He is absolutely straight down the line. If he doesn't want to do something or doesn't like it, he, he speaks up. He's the, let's say, uh, he's the diplomatic version of Natalie. I can't believe you said pussy still. I'm still getting <laughs> over the pussy chat. Um, well, he wasn't the only one who's been going a bit of face to face with Nat. Have a look at this one. This is insane! Yeah, I don't Everybody's like Everybody's so this. fucking fake. I don't like seeing so like this, So fucking though. fake. But, Rodrigo, this is fake as fuck. Listen, I can promise you that. Is, remember, I can is... promise you that. And from here on out, every little... Anytime someone's... Shut the fuck up talking to me. You're there fake is... as fuck. You're fake, you're fake, you're fake, you're fake. You're fake, you're fake. I'm not gonna do this because it's like, what the fuck? So now every time I have to fucking um, pack my fucking bags... Because that's not happening. But that's the game. But what I'm saying is, is I'm not going to play this fucking game. But, Trisha, that's the game. It's a game. So, <laughs> we need to talk about Rodrigo. He seems to be Natalie's only ally in there, pretty much, I think, at the moment. How do you think he's dealing with her? Well, I think it's interesting that Natalie calls everyone fake while she's looking at Rodrigo's face. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. But here's the thing. I'm trying to see it now because she starts learning to me. No, but here's, here's the serious thing. Here's a, let's, let's be real here. If you've had so much work done on your face that it doesn't, it doesn't move, we're animals. We're animals. We pick up on people's eyes, how they look, how they even smell. When you get rid of all of that, you're behind a mask. So I think he's, uh, he's what you call a chameleon. I've noticed whoever he's with, he, he manages he to adapt, fit in. He does He does adapt. But do you so, think he feels threatened by Natalie? No, That's why he's being close to her? I don't think he feels threatened. I think because he's done so much work in the States, he understands where she's coming from. And I do think Natalie has to be like Natalie back in the area of the States where she comes mm. from. I live there. Trust me, if she was like any of the others, she would not survive five minutes. But do you so, think it's a genuine friendship between oh, Rodrigo and Natalie? no. You don't? No. Do you? No. no. Someone just went, nah. <laughs> yeah. Casual sheep noise over well, there. I, I, was gonna, I was gonna give you that very famous old West Indian quote when you actually said that. I know you what remember you're gonna that do. One? She's kissing her teeth at me. <laughs> She's done it. Um, after the whole Gabby versus Natalie thing, there was one person with a calming effect at soothing that downpour on Gabby. Let's have a look. I don't know why I've done it to myself, though. Hey, come on here. 
this is this an experience? I said I don't go know? mad. No. Listen, it's an experience, and you, you're probably looking buzzing to come in here. Don't let two fucking people ruin it who you never met before. You think about it. Yeah, because yeah, like Rod's just been like, you only ask the boys, to, and I'm like, that's not fucking true. If that's the way it's looking to people, like what, like it makes me look like a fucking idiot. They're not gonna, they're not gonna look. They're, people ain't gonna see it like because you've got a lot more in common with me, Jermaine, Ben, Chloe. Chloe just didn't want to train yesterday, and then we're just with you, so we're gonna do it. Listen, we know that these two are friends on the outside, and he is going to console her, it's his mate. But what are you making of Dan's approach to arguments in the house? Is he staying a bit back, or is he getting involved, do you think? No, he's not really getting involved. Um, he likes mopping up after arguments. I think he, he, he likes the comforting of girls. With the tattooed trio, as I call them, the it's, it's just the tattooed trio. This is going to click on, I it's can sense it. Tattooed trio, because they all look so much alike. I mean, I'm sorry, if you saw those ink markings in the dark, would you know one from the other? <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to sit here and think about well, it. There you go. <laughs> but no, they, they, they're all sweet lads. However, um, like most guys of their age, not including you, Rylan, they see if, if you're a girl and you're pretty and you can be flirted with, that's fine. If you're a mummy figure, like maybe Kirsty or Sally, they can understand that. What a lot of guys have difficulty understanding is a girl like Natalie, who's actually like an alpha male. Mm. She's outside the box. They don't know how to deal with her. They do know how to deal very much with Gabby, because she, she can do the sweet <laughs> like that. Uh, we, haven't seen that. we haven't seen that from Chloe, but then again, I don't think we've seen anything really of Chloe. Well, uh, without giving any spoilers, you might see a bit more of Chloe oh, in tomorrow night's main show. Good. Um, but while still Natalie has been throwing herself through the house, um, we got a little bit of a grip of Kirsty handling the situation in her own little way. Have a look. My philosophy is you really don't engage with an angry person when they're angry because they don't really want to communicate and they're trying to sort of kick everything apart. Including you, it doesn't really offend me because she's a non-discriminatory ass to people when she's mean. I mean, when she's mad. When she's mad, whoever walks into her space is attacked. You shouldn't take it personally. Anybody who jumps over the fence is going to get torn apart. Now, I'm loving Kirsty Alley in there. Don't get me wrong, and she is quite a zen person. She yes, said that yes. herself. But are we going to see that point if Kirsty maybe don't get enough sleep, like she said, or mm -hmm. anything like that? Come to blows with Natalie. I don't think she'd come to blows with Natalie. I love, yet. I'm sorry, I love this. Not going, yeah, yeah. Well. I don't think she'd come to blows. I think she'd be like she says. She she'll just make it short and sweet. But remember, Natalie. Uh, but remember, Kirsty is like. I mean, us old birds in our sixties. We've kind of been there, done it. Got several T-shirts. <laughs> I think. You lot are all young. You're applauding me for still being alive at 60. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, when you've got a few years under your belt, you've pretty much seen it all, especially if you've been in Hollywood as long as Kirsty. Especially if you're high on Kirsty Alley. Yeah, exactly. And she knows who she is. She's grounded. So if she does bark, she'll just go, wow. And that'll be it. That'll she be it. She will go for it. Listen, I'm so happy she's back. Trisha Goddard, everyone. <laughs> so happy you're back. Darling, Charlie. Psychic Sally has been trying to calm Storm Natalie, but she is still raging. We'll see you straight after this break. <laughs> Big Brothers bit on the side. So, Storm Natalie is still wreaking havoc. Let's have a little look at another exclusive, you lucky thing. What do you want from Natalie, darling? Well, that's going to make you feel better about the situation, about Natalie and you being here together, which you uh, are. Why do you think I shouldn't be here? OK, time out. So, this is the celebrity Big Brother house. That's a big word. A celebrity is, like, you know, someone that is well-known, someone who's worked really hard to be where they are in their careers. And I, I feel that, you know, your purpose to be here, you haven't really done anything. I try to give you, like, little, like, like boosters, like, come on, let's get in the pool, or come on, let's go do this. Yeah, but I think you're taking it to the point where you're actually causing unnecessary arguments just to get the airtime. Oh, well, absolutely not, because... That petty things like, that don't even need to be petty. argued about. Like, tell me something that you think is For petty. example, the chair, like, bringing up every day and then calling me quiet every day or boring because I don't participate in a game or, like, saying Gabby's fading away. If you just want to be quiet and float by in here and not say anything and just be cute, cool. 
The, to me, that's not a celebrity. You know, like, I just feel like you're just here. Somebody that starts arguments every day no. and gets voted for eviction because the housemates don't enjoy living with them. That's fine. You don't have to enjoy living with me. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm not going anywhere. That's the thing. You, you're going to have to live with me. Oh, oh I love my job! <laughs> oh, Dan, let me come to you. What are we making of that? I'm not going anywhere. I agree with every word of what Natalie just said <gasps> then. Really? I really, really do. Come on, what makes a celebrity? Oh. What makes a great housemate? Chloe is not it. She's boring. She's not prepared to put herself out there. She's not saying anything. And I'm sorry, she actually did need to go in there and prove herself, given that, as Natalie said, she hasn't really done anything. Who, but in her I can career. hear a few agreeing. Who disagrees with I what Dan's got to say? Oh, come on, Look, the ego has truly crash landed. That's what happened. You know, someone needs to take Natalie aside and say, look, if you act like an unhinged bitch, you get nominated. <laughs> Natalie is cash money. Cash money. Cash money. Cash money. Cash money. I don't know what that means. I'm just not down with the cool kids. I've got no idea what that means. But I'll do that. I thought that was Baby Shark. You know, all the kids are loving it. Oh, well, our celebs have had almost a week to settle in and they get to know each other very slowly, but some a bit more quicker. But we get to know them as well, and you are never ones to keep your opinions to yourself. Um, so our treats uh, have been coming in from you guys, and Sally probably saw this one coming. Lisa says, thank you, Bob. Uh, Lisa says, for someone who works with vulnerable people as a supposedly enlightened and trustworthy medium, Sally Morgan is coming across as not a very nice person. And I'm not just talking about the Scottish issue. I've just seen her generating and fueling malicious gossip. Georgia, is she? Is she a gossip in there? Is she not coming across nice? I've not seen her doing hardly anything. Apart from doing her readings, I don't feel like she's been getting that involved, bless her. Like, she's all right, but she hasn't done enough to comment in that way. Do I you don't think, think that's a fair point of Sally? Oh. Sally. No, Sally's there to talk to them, OK? And she's telling them about what, they, what they've done in the past. And unfortunately, what's happening is they're crying because they're getting very emotional with what, they're, cool. what she's telling them. That's it's what a medium true. does. Yeah. Um, I'm mixed with a lot of mediums. But okay. you don't, you don't, you don't think <laughs> That she's coming across as like no, what not that at all. I haven't seen that at all. Does anyone before. think she is? You do. Oh, go on, girl. Get in. I, I think that she has picked on Hardeep. Like, I think it's been noticeable that every time that there's a conversation, that she's stuck it out on Has him. She? Yeah, before nominations. Go on, Bob. She, yeah, just before nominations. <laughs> that's why he he voted to choose her. He feels hostility she from her. She did bring her that up I, in noms, and you're I right. Do, I do see hostility from her that's unnecessary mm. towards him. All right, darling, well, don't you worry yourself <laughs> about it. Get up about it. Let's move on to our next treat now. Uh, Bob X says, Sorry, guys, in my opinion, Ryan is playing a game. Oh. No one will probably notice. But I think he does. Katia, is Ryan Thomas playing a game in the house, do you think? What game? I don't know. No, I don't see that. Uh, maybe because they've been stuck in the house, in the White House, and they, we haven't seen them much, doing much or talking to anyone. You oh, haven't? No, Dan? I don't know. No, I don't think he's playing a game, but I think at the moment we haven't seen any of his personality shine yeah. through. But I think he probably realises he's going to stay in for a while. He's got time he's to nice. be so. Does anyone agree with that? Anyone think he is playing a game? No. No, no one? No one? No one? I've been fair. I tried. <laughs> uh, but we did see tonight, though, Ryan was happy to be relieved of his duties when he came out of the White House. Dan, we've just said it. Do you think now he's out of this task, he can now come into the house and show everyone who he really is? Well, I think he does need to now, because at the end of the day, there are a lot of sort of alpha males in that house, and I actually think the interesting thing with him is that he might fly under the radar, but don't we want big personalities in that house, and mm. I think he's got a story to tell, so I think he has to get a bit more involved now, rather than sort of being Kirsty's muse. George, do you think Ryan wants to be an alpha male in the house? I just generally think Ryan is a massive character. He's got such a great sense of humour. Because of all the arguing and the negativity, maybe we've not got to see that much of it, but believe me, knowing him, we definitely will. OK, well, let's move on to the next one. Uh, Alfie Sheldon, hi, Alfie, said... Ben got zero nominations. Imagine thinking that on launch night. Hashtag CBB. <laughs> Dan, are you surprised he didn't yes. get any Why? Beyond surprise, because he's so annoying. Do you think he's annoying? 
Do you think yeah, the house I, makes If a I was in there, I would have nominated him 100%. Him and Hardy. Katia, what about you? It's fun. Like George just said, boys are fun. They're riding suitcases. <laughs> like, I know if I was to dance with him, it would be so much fun. And I like people like that. So why what not? What are you guys making of Ben? What is he? Who said that? Oh, oh, I can see your hands doing this, like Statue of Liberty scales. Go nothing. On. He's he's not stood out to me. He's not. He's he's just nothing. Yes. You don't think he stood out? Who thinks he? Anyone else got anything to say about Ben? Go on, but hello, you. You're no. all right. How are you? Oh, I'm doing all right. Yes, he has stood out. He's great. He's good looking. He's got everything going for him. Yeah, he's gonna stay. Yeah. He's happy. He's happy. He's happy. He's happy. He's happy. He's happy. Ben's like the pizza that doesn't arrive. You know, on launch night you thought <laughs> <laughs> you thought you, you thought that he was going to do something, but it's it's one week later, and it's like you know, it's like where's Wally? You see him on the show, you're like, oh, I remember him from launch night. I know what you're saying, but I do think I, I think you've got to be fair to Ben. He has been involved in everything. He seems to be going around the house, doesn't he, Giorgio? And he's getting on with people. Do you think, like Dan said, he's annoying the housemates, or is he more annoying the viewers from what we've seen? I mean, poor, but I didn't think he was annoying in the first place, the poor geezer, but I feel like you just sort of catch him in the, in the background. He's sort of there, but, yeah, he ain't that involved. He's going for a divorce, the poor fellow. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> no sympathy. <laughs> <for me. laughs> uh, let's get back to the tweets. Uh, it's not Shay kool -Aid, it's Slay kool -Aid, by the way. Uh, it said, hashtag CBB, respect to Nick for not nominating Natalie. I like this man more every single day. Yeah, yeah. Now, I am quite surprised. Katia, let me come to you, because mm. I genuinely thought Natalie would have a clean sweep across the board this week with noms, because she has been at the centre of every single argument that's been going on in that he house. He did say, also, he did say to her that it might only on three people. It doesn't mean everybody hates her, so he's tried to give a sense to her as well, and he's the one that calmed her down. Yeah. I think Natalie's only getting angry more and more because no-one else is. Yeah. And maybe that's why... Gabby's not happy because it will bring eventually out something naughty of her and she doesn't like that and she's crying and let's get rid of Natalie because she will bring that bad side of me. Dan, I mean, on launch night, especially a lot of our younger viewers as well to the show, they didn't really know who Nick was. A lot of people were going, why is he in there? Blah, blah, blah. I learned about him. I was interested. You learned and then yeah. he's got an interesting yeah. story to tell. He's, Hello, he's one of the world's most wanted men. He just dropped that yeah. one. <laughs> Dan, do we think the viewers are warming a lot more now to Nick because they're seeing pretty much what's coming across as a real well, guy? Well, I mean, I find it strange. Uh, hard. I find it a struggle to warm to him. You do. It's past. Like um, but look, I think it was a really good move not to nominate Natalie. It's probably one of the only things that he's done in there which is worthy of a thumbs up. A thumbs up from Dan there. Um, what are we making of Nick? I think for 1995's most wanted man, it seems to be quite a nice guy. Yeah. You think he's coming? Yeah. 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 Bob, go on, you're popping up again. Because he's, he's of the generation. Like, I remember him, World War happened, and he's but nice. But you remember the war, darling? <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking! I messed up! It's fan of Bob! It's fan of Bob! <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to our next street. We've got quick time for one more. Uh, this one's about Roxanne uh, in Living Colour. Says she is beyond fake. It's like she's at a permanent audition all day. For some reason, she seems to think this is what we want to see from her, which, of course, we don't. Smacks of desperation and attention-seeking. Roxanne. What are we making of Roxanne? I think Roxanne's very fake, and what you see is she, she's just like she's on stage every day. You think she's fake? Who likes her? Who thinks she's coming across well? You I think she's just a nervous energy. Yeah. So I think she's quite pleasant, but she's still a little bit up here. I think, oh, you sound like Kimberly from Girls Aloud. I am. <laughs> <laughs> that is who I am. I knew it, Kimberly. I knew that was you. Uh, let's go down the panel. Katia, we've got Hardy and we've got Natalie facing the first eviction of the series. Who do you want to go? Natalie should stay. You think Natalie should stay? Dan? Hardy must go. You think Hardy to go? George? Oh, I prefer Hardy, but to keep the show interesting, Natalie's got to stay. You think Natalie's got to stay? What are you like? Um, I'd like... Sorry, Hardy to go. Hardy to go. <laughs> um, Hardy. Hardy to go. Hardy to go. Hardy to go. Hardy. Hardy to go. Hardy out. Hardy out. Hardy. Anyone for Natalie out? No! No, 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 no. I think Natalie out all the way. Natalie out all the way, do you think that as well? Do you know what? What a night. We're out of time. It's so good. Uh, that is a lot of tonight. A massive thank you to my brilliant panel and our amazing audience. Welcome to Black
tomorrow night for Starter 11 with my guests, Bob Williams, Craig, uh, Sophie Kasai, and Joe Swash. Plus, Rodrigo's hairstylist is going to be with us, giving us an insight to the house. Hey, 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 hey. Until then, night out. You're fake, you're fake.